Yeah, I'm gonna do this. You know what? I don't like 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Hey, time to check in, guys. <laughs> I haven't checked it in like weeks. What? I I know I got my set, but I want my notebook. We can all check it. We can all find this this thing. Thing that's phenomenal. We'll check all. Okay. I'll try not to touch. Hey, look. Uh, your capacity to handle that machine is a lot better than mine. I break into a rash when I touch it. Okay, everyone, welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Going to get started. All right, I will let folks in the back know. Please pass around that little sheet that I will check you out. Oh, here I go, Miss. You went. Okay. Sorry. It's all right. Wow. You go back. <laughs> I'll start with that one. Uh, good morning and welcome to One Million Cups. It's nine o'clock in Albuquerque and it's time to uh, lower the barrier of access to uh, education and resources for entrepreneurs. So first thing to do, if you haven't done it yet, is it's time to check in. So um, you can point your phone at the QR code on those sheets that are lying around. Uh, three check-ins gets you a pen, six check-ins gets you a notebook. So uh, do it every time you attend. Thing. Yeah, here we go. So it's, as I said, it's our mission in One Million Cups to lower the barrier of entry of access to education, resource, and connection for new and inspiring entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurship is a difficult journey. You need some helping hands along the way, and there are plenty of them here. So, oops, thanks. Wow. So uh, we work toward that mission. Uh, through a consistent program that's crafted by the Kauffman Foundation, our sponsor. And there are nearly 200 chapters and million cups operating all across the United States, uh, kicking off at 9 a.m. local time on Wednesday. So you're free to visit those. And um, there's, this is our the Southwest region. There's a lot of folks in Texas and Oklahoma. I've been to some of these places, both uh, physically and Virtually, uh, virtually is a great way to enjoy One Million Cups. You can go to One Million Cups on the East Coast at seven in the morning, relax, and get here in time uh, for nine. So I encourage you folks to do that as well. So what are the key pillars of One Million Cups? These are presentations, not pitches. Those of you who have done pitches, typically to investors, you know the company is going to displace Facebook and Google and Apple all at the same time and you have the perfect team and all you need is an infusion of cash. We know that the reality is often different from that. Uh, you have challenges, there are things you need from the team, there's things you don't know, there's things you don't know that you don't know, and you need to talk to other people who are outside your company in the community that have gone through some of the challenges that you've gone through. And that's what we're here So for. So authentic connections, not just a race to see how many business cards you can pass out in 30 seconds, but you gotta talk to people, find people that know stuff you don't know, find people who need to know what you know, and have a good uh, talk with them. We're run for the community, by the community. We're all volunteers. We're not like stricken with altruism. We all get something out of uh, volunteering for One Million Cups. And we're radically and intentionally inclusive. All kinds of people are welcome here and all kinds of businesses, from um, whiteboard companies to mom and pop brick and mortar businesses uh, to guys that are almost too important to drop in here anymore. So uh, everybody's welcome here. Uh, this is our mission. You can read it. Um, we are trying to be as inclusive as possible. Pull in everybody that might lift up uh, New Mexico by its bootstraps. And, uh, you know, that's about talking to other people, making connections and not being alone. And uh, don't do anything that makes people feel unwelcome. If, if you are a habitual um, user of that behavior, uh, please spend uh, Wednesday morning somewhere else. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, it's easy to apply to present. You talk to any one of the organizers, you'll see them in a moment. Uh, you, you should have a for-profit business. That is, you sell things to people for less than it costs to make them. That's what a for-profit business is. Uh, and you've sold something to someone who's not your mom. Okay, we're a little loose about the rules now. If you've sold an idea, so you're a whiteboard company that doesn't have anything in the market yet, but you've sold an idea to a grant agency and if somebody's written you a check with a couple of commas in it, we certainly want to hear from you, even if you don't have product in market. So 
Uh, we will assign you a coach. We'll help you give the standard million cups talk where you talk about your challenges and vulnerabilities. And we hope it works out. Uh, these are the folks you could talk to. I'm Paul Sauter. Uh, we have Lisa Atkins right here, Eric Renz Whitmore, uh, Adam, where are you? You're right back there. I think he's getting donuts. And uh, Sonia is online. online today. Hey, Sonia. And we'd also like to thank our sponsors. Uh, Fat Pipe for low these eight years has been our home. Uh, Jason Cullen Photography, always making us look good. More than organized, organizing your stuff, your mind, and providing creamer. And Foundation for Sustainable Living, our new coffee sponsor. And Noventum Custom Software Design, also delivering donuts. Tell me about Invive Solutions. They are going to be our tea and healthy breakfast option on the days that they are here. <laughs> All right, so those of you ready to take the, the you know positive step of not destroying your life with a demon bean, they're here for you. Okay. <laughs> so thanks, and we'll move on to our presenter. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh. Excellent. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Uh, Paul just gets things started in this high-energy fashion, and then we... And then we all go to sleep, and that's that's what I really enjoy here at One Million Cups. I'm kidding, of course. I don't really have a ton to say, but for whatever reason, the, the theme and beam is seems my friend. <laughs> so I'm speaking. This, this is first of all, this is a really good looking crowd, and it's also pretty full. This might be this is toward the high end of folks we've actually had in space, so that's great. Um, I don't have a ton to do, but I'll just say, who, who was it that invited you here in the first place? I just showed up. How did you show up? <laughs> well, that's, first of all, we love that. Um, what, I, what I love is that folks come in, they, they're like, what the heck is this? But I heard that there was coffee and I heard there are donuts and you should probably come on over. You know, it is Wednesday morning. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but you, you have an opportunity to hear other people present. And ideally what we've done, as Paul said, is we've created a welcoming environment where folks can share their stories and we can be a little bit vulnerable. We can share, you know what? I don't really know how to do that. You know, I, I don't want to talk. Sometimes people feel reluctant to talk to like a higher end organization that's, you know, Y Combinator. And they want you to have every, it feels like they want you to have everything solved. So I like that these guys are fairly new in their business um, and they're coming in, you know, at a good stage to learn from people in our audience. Um, and I'll just say that I was really going to put it. I really enjoyed and was felt, felt a nice connection with what it is that they're doing, the way that they're engaging with, with their clients, uh, the way that they came here and um, in order to kind of learn from other entrepreneurs. And, and, I, and I hope, I, I think you're really going to enjoy their presentation and I hope we have a good Q&A after. So um, <laughs> let me make sure I've got the right thing. Legacy family documentaries. I think I, in my head, I keep moving the names of those things around. But legacy family documentaries, come on over and let's uh, let's take some. Oh, thank you. All right, guys. Thank you for having us. Um, my name is Oscar, and this is my buddy Katola. Nice to meet um, you guys. <laughs> so a little bit about us, just to get you guys to know us. Um, my film journey, uh, because we are a video production company, my film journey started pretty early when I was like 12-ish. And uh, it all started because of a movie that I watched. And it, I don't know if you guys have watched like Iron Man. You guys know Iron Man? <laughs> He's my favorite superhero. And when I watched him, I was like, okay, I'm going to be just like him. So I wanted to make the Iron Man suit. I started this long process of me being an engineer and then going to school and going to college and then realizing that engineering is really, really, really boring. And I hated it. And then I was like, okay, why did I like that movie so much? And it was really because of the story that it told. It told the story of uh, Tony Stark's downfall, how he came out of it, right? So stories really got me into storytelling. And that's why I wanted to become a videographer, a screenwriter. So this is where an idea like this came to be. Awesome. My name is Keikoa Gonzalez. So I'm like a pineapple pizza with green chili on it. <laughs> And, uh, and my story is a little different on how I got to uh, into like the the passion of filmmaking and videography and all that good stuff. I started at a really young age because when I was young, I was a pretty sick kid, like really sick. So I couldn't really go out and like play with my siblings. I had to stay inside. And guess what? Watch movies. And for me, that was like a really big comfort in watching Sandlot, Homeward Bound, which is still one of my favorite movies of all time. But yeah, I didn't realize that this passion started to spring up inside of me, and I was like, wow. 
I'm able to do this for people too. The same thing that this <laughs> that these movies are doing for me. But with legacy family documentaries, I'm able to do this on an even more personal level, if you will. So started at a young age and just passion kept on growing and growing and hasn't left yet. So it's really, really awesome. All right, so to show you what the main problem is that we're trying to solve, we're gonna play a little game. How many of you guys have played telephone? Okay, <laughs> keep your hands up because I will pick seven of you. All right, well, it's one, two, three, four, five, she's doing computer, six <laughs> and seven. So if you guys could do me a huge favor, I know I've all I told you, but stand over here in a line. I'm gonna so, run around all the way on the other side. All right, so you're gonna go over to the other side. So the way, the way telephone works, yeah, if you wanna play, you can jump in. The way the game of telephone works is one person at the very end is gonna say something, okay? He only ha they only have one chance to say it, okay? They whisper it, they whisper it to their ear, okay? And then they have to say what they think they heard to the next person. You only get one chance to do this. All right, they're only in line. Okay, I'll be the last one. Okay, go ahead. Who's one? I'm two. You're two. So I'm gonna, I'll start he, he's one. I just teleported over here, you know? All right, go ahead. <laughs> Background, yeah. <laughs> 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 My mom makes the best pickle package. <laughs> yes. well, so, okay, uh, okay, thank you guys so much. Don't look bad, that was close. Yeah, that was really close. You guys did better than we thought. We were hoping that you guys would bomb. But it was close. It was my mom makes the best pickled cabbage. So the cabbage is technically turned into package. Right, that's so nice. That changes the entire meaning of the story. That's kind of what we do. So with Family Legacy Documentaries, we take a story coming from the source, so that way whenever that story gets told, it's not filtered out through many different theories. Okay, so, all right, so our mission is to create a culture of unity and remembrance within family, right? So within that, we wanna give people the opportunity to carry on their legacy, share stories, share lessons. Um, and then we also wanna share stories that many people haven't heard of yet. You know, grandma, grandpa have stories that they don't talk about it. they've lived 80 plus years and you don't hear a lot of what their lives were right. so about us so me and this guy have been working on this video company for about four years now which st started off as ray five productions where we did a lot of like promo videos commercials that type of stuff but the funny thing about legacy is that it came as a total accident or, or an idea if you will so I've previously, even before I met Oscar, I've done like kind of smaller projects doing documentaries for like family members, all that good stuff. So I had this idea in my mind where it was like, this could be something amazing. Told it to Oscar, we used to have a older website and it was just in this tiny little box. It was just legacy, uh, family legacy documentaries. And it was just one paragraph. And we're like, ah, nobody's really gonna look at this. It's probably gonna be nothing. You know, it was just, it was just a concept at the time. And then one person believed in us. And her name was Maria Henderson. I think she actually might be on the Zoom today. She might give a testimonial later on. But she, she reached out to us and we did our first legacy documentary for her, which was for her dad. His name was Gilbert Gallegos. Um, he was the president of the Fraternal Order of Police, over 400,000 members, worked with presidents of the United States. And it was just, <laughs> just an amazing experience, not only for us, but the impact that it had on her family herself and the friends around him. Because unfortunately, Gil passed away while we were filming the documentary. So not only did that impact the family and us, but to be able to withhold that legacy and watch everybody see it, see their faces light up, smile, cry. It's like, wow, this is so much more than what we thought it was. We could do this forever. And, and, and no matter what, stories are always gonna be stories, you know? They're always going to be so special, and we don't understand how special they are until we lose them. Awesome. So the way the business currently is set, we have three main services, and the services go from memoir, tribute, and enchantment. 
So a memoir is going to be uh, one interview, and we take uh, grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, and they give lessons. So one to three lessons, uh, what they want to pass down to younger generations. Tribute is uh, all-encompassing, collected interviews of close relatives, family members, friends that uh, want to say something about some one who's made an impact in their life, kind of retelling shared experiences or journeys that they've had with that person. And then Enchantment is uh, a family documentary. So we take the family together, talk about how they've, uh, how they've grown, how close they are, things, things how they are now, what they expect them to be later on, things like that. Um, so the business model currently is uh, referral-based. Go ahead, I'll let you. All right, sounds good. <laughs> So we're dabbling with a few things because right now this, this business model and even the, co the concept of this company in general, it, it's pretty niche, if you will. There's not many people on Google typing in, how do I get my own personalized documentary? How do I document this? It's, it's uh, hard to get on the SEO, if you will. So we're trying to work on some type of referral-based system, maybe working with people, maybe giving incentives in that way. Um, implementing online systems. So we are working on SEO, trying to get our, our company on the top of Google. So we've been working on that for maybe the past few weeks now. Um, something that we do find working pretty well is our physical marketing. But like the beautiful Ava has told us, we don't want our brochures and flyers to blow away in the wind, you know? So we do want to kind of allocate better ways to use our physical marketing um, from our, again, our brochures, flyers, and business cards. And lastly, networking. That's why we're here today <laughs> to, to get our name known. And then you just know like, hey, this service does exist. This is something that is viable as a, a video um, service, which is really cool. Um, so all that ties into what our vision is. Um, what we notice is that these videos require a lot of connection between people. And for a company to just come in and say, hey, I'm gonna document your life. You need to have that relationship established. That's why when we go to referral-based systems, we want to talk with someone we trust, and then they trust their network. They have a network already established. So we want to build relationships within that person. It's going to take a while, uh, but I think that would be the best way to go. Um, and that ties in with our vision that, that allows us to guide and inspire family members and, and, and people around us, you know, guiding those later generations to come. Um, we did have a video, video does not work, uh, but this was a trailer that we made for the Gil Gallegos legacy. It is on our website. So if you guys want to check that out, we can talk about that after the presentation. Um, no, I don't want to play. All right. There you go. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> so real quick, um, or oh, I think Maria might be on here. Yeah, she oh. could. Do we want to check and see it? Yeah, that would be Yeah, that'd Maria's be on. If she wants to give a little testimonial about how it went. Oh, oh there she is. Can, can we can we invite <laughs> you up on, on on stage? Maria, you can unmute. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Well, my experience has been absolutely it leaves their video, their documentary that they did on my father, the, the tribute, uh, has had left me speechless. Um, it's one thing to have a relationship with a parent and um, actually get to know them through their friends and through their network, which is what this video also did for me. Um, I took care of my father 24-7 for three years. He passed away due to Parkinson's and he was um, he was a leader, not only in this community, but across the country. And I got to know him in an intimate way through this documentary, through listening to the stories um, of his friends and um, even um, the family, my children, seeing and hearing their perspectives of what their relationship was like and the special moments that they had with him, which is all obviously very different than what a daughter would have. And um, these uh, two fine young men, they, they're, we just met 
half kind of hazardly. Um, uh, I had some other projects lined up and whatnot, but what they put together for my father and for me and his friends was, it was unbelievable and worth every single investment that, um, that my father, it was interesting, my father left behind a legacy that paid for his own legacy that has touched over 200,000 people's lives. And um, I just appreciate them so much, their, their professionalism, their compassion, their flexibility, their dedication. It all, it all showed in that tribute video to my father. And I encourage you just to get a taste and uh, just a nugget of what they can do for your family, for your family's legacy, and for your own legacy, I encourage you to go to their website and take a look at that tribute video or the commercial, so to speak, um, of what they did for my father. It was just, it just was mind blowing. And um, I can't say enough about this company about these two young men and I can't express my gratitude for what they did for me. But I think what we'll do, so um, we may try and play at least the video in background. Do we want to try and do that now or do we, yeah, let's see if we can do that. I'll give some other kind of table setting kind of stuff, which is, is it going to work? The way that we have the screens and everything set up is we, we can play video or we can hear audio, but we can't do both. And sometimes both are helpful. Um, I'll get out of the way. <laughs> you want to maybe talk through a little bit? So yeah, this bit? is yeah. uh, Gil's giving a speech here at the U.S. Capitol for um, fallen, police fallen police officers. And that's going on in the background while he's speaking. Um, so yeah, he was a well-respected Man, he, he he had a lot of accomplishments, and even in the in the interviews that we did, everyone held him such reverence. Like he was such a giving person, and you were able to hear that through the interviews. And it's a lot. It, it it's a lot of work, but it was it was well worth it. Um, everyone had a lot of good things to say, and to condense that down to about forty minutes, it was it was a struggle, but it was uh, very pleasing. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll form a line here if anybody in person would like to ask questions of these two gentlemen, and we'll also take questions from online at this line for you. Please remember to introduce yourself and come up to the front. Yeah, come on up. Um, so I'm Kate Fain, and I worked as a nurse for 25 years. And towards the end of it, I worked home care, palliative care, hospice. And I just, uh, this is a wonderful program. The reason I have the hat on is when I heard about it, I had to roll out of the house for the bed here. But um, basically, yes, um, every senior center in Albuquerque would love to hear your presentation. And uh, please, absolutely take it, I mean, take it for what it is, um, because people are all over the country and they can't talk to their grandparents. Mm -hmm. And so, for me now, I try to explain my grandparents to my own kids yeah. because they never knew them. Mm -hmm. so thank you for thank you so much. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good. Good. I'm Dr. Norm with Dr. Norm's Connection.com, and my business is Dementia Prevention. This is a great idea. I was at a funeral several years ago, and somebody put together a DVD of all the stuff they captured after the person died. Mm -hmm. This is good to, to do ahead of time. Yeah. I have a friend of mine, her name is Gail Rubin, and she takes care of uh, uh, festival, dying festivals or whatever. And, she, and she's connected with the funeral homes. She has a whole business built around getting people to realize this. So this might be a good connection for yeah. you to get a hold of her, her business, because she has a festival every year and people talk about death and dying. Mm -hmm. And this is a great way to, to 
add, hey, here's a dimension that you guys can add to yeah, what she's right. doing. So right. I'll give you the connection after the meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Since Appreciate there's you. so many people asking questions, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch back and forth to online and then so is it Sonia who's first? Looks like we got Sonia, then Sue, and then you're in. Okay, Sonia, go ahead. Okay. Morning guys. I'm glad you made it in to, to present. And um my question is. So the keywords that you're using for your SEO, what what are the keywords that you're using? <laughs> Good question. Uh, so we actually got this SEO up and running like yesterday. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were, yeah, we were we were playing phone tag for quite a bit. So we still kind of figure out what words are gonna are gonna hit. Um, definitely, videography is like up there. Documentaries is up there. But like like we like Kiko mentioned earlier, it, it's really hard for us to get documentaries as a search because not many people are thinking about doing a documentary for themselves or for someone they care about. It's more like a family video, but even family videos get confused with transcribing VHS to DVD, which is also something we're thinking about doing just to just to capture that <laughs> SEO. But yeah, so we'll we'll find out soon enough uh, what those keywords are. Okay. That's well, just. Just to let you know, I was searching on Google Trends while you were while you were talking, and right uh, initially, I'm not going to think about it as a documentary, but Family Memories was way up there in Google Trends, and you might also see about trying to capture. There are people who uh, try to write a book, you know, about their their um, family member, but a video book would be way easier <laughs> to do. Um, so that might also be an audience to try to capture. Yeah, I like that. Thank like you that. so much. So like you're thinking like uh, biography would be like a keyword or. Yeah. Um, or a memoir or. Yeah, Definitely. something like that. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, I'll go to a person in line here. Hi, uh, my name is Michelle. I work Michelle. for a company called Nobentum who do website development. But my question has to deal a little bit more with um, what you plan on doing in the future, because currently you're doing like small networking right now, right? Mm -hmm. But in the future, do you hope to like travel like long distances just because half of my family's in Alaska and the other half is in Mexico? So those are <laughs> just pretty long yeah, distances. Really, yes. yes, complete opposites. Um, are you planning on doing those kind of ventures? So do you mind if I take this one? Yeah, so for sure. So future scaling of the company is going to be with us. Expanding with actually working behind us for repeating the question. Sounds like some folks didn't fully hear that online. Oh, so so what she's saying is if the for access for people that are not in the area to be able to get their type of personal interviews for their stories, um, how are we are we going to be able to have that type of like Expansion. Expansion. Yeah. And so we do plan on that type of expansion, working with um, other videographers, editors, because the main thing is videographers. So once the company does scale up to a level, it might not be us traveling out there, but we can send someone out that way to be able to get these those types of interviews. And just like what we did for Maria for the time being, maybe for, for time's sake, um, a lot of the interviews that we did do for her dad was actually via Zoom conferences. So we had in-person videos, and then we had also had these Zoom conferences for the people that we just weren't able to get in, get to them where they couldn't get to us. So there is work around it, but future, I would like to always have in-person interviews. So we're definitely working on that. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank, you. Awesome. Thank you. Sue Perlosny, I think you're next. Thanks. I just love this idea. You saw that in the chat, which you're not saying in the chat if you can't see it. There's several of us that agreed with family memory as a key search term. Family memories is what came to mind. I'd like to know what's the average cost of this and how you do your pricing. It's a great question. We actually have a pricing survey for, for anyone that's interested um, because we are still trying to figure out exactly what the market is accepting. Like what, what is way out of extremes too high and what is too low that just nobody believes it offers a value that we're, we're saying it does. Um, so I can't give you like a solid number because we do have the three different services. So did you, were we allowed to give a survey? Can we give a survey? Sure. All right. So uh, what we could do is when we're done here, we'll put up a, a, 
a Google slide or a, a form, and we'll send it out to you guys so that way you can fill it out for us. Yeah, we have to share that. I just wanted to add, this has such a strong emotional component. So you think about that part as well. And then possibly a senior discount, meaning if you're going to these senior centers and you're going to appeal to them, they may have a restricted budget. So there might be a package just for them. Thank you. Most definitely. And we actually kind of have something like that within that survey for, um, for like to be able to help with the, with the senior citizens and all that good stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Sandy Hirschberg, I'm the Do Business Development for a Startup, Global Compensation. Um, what is your capacity now? What are your constraints? And if you were to expand nationally, how would that look? Oh, wait, wait, let me, let me answer this. Right, I, get, I get this big idea. It's just not, it's just I, I, I get so crazy. Okay. So currently what we, we have is our two-man team. So the two-man team we do the, the pre, the front of it and the back. So the front of it is setting up schedules, getting calls, getting everything organized. That way the videographer, all he has to do is show up that day and shoot. And then you have the, the um, interviewer, which would probably be one of the two, most likely the one who scheduled the interviews. So, so far that takes about a month. So our capacity is one documentary per month. So over a year, that's 12. What we want to do is scale that up by hiring two man teams with a close relationship, a videographer and then that pre planning guy. As you can tell, I'm like the smart guy. He's the video. <laughs> he's the video. <laughs> Where's my glasses? <laughs> so, so I, I set everything up and then he shows up and kills it with the video and editing. So we, so we kind of work hand in hand like that. Right? So, what we want to do is replicate that. We want to replicate kind of what we have here, maybe scale it up even more. We have a, a, a pricing plan, but of course, of course, the budget, how much we're willing to put into these videographers and how much we're willing to put into the, the we call them project managers. Um, but again, that goes back to the pricing survey. We need to see if our market allows for that kind of work because videographers aren't cheap. Videographers are kind of pricey. They're, they, they can range anywhere from two to five grand. So it just depends what you're working with. Um, so. And then now just expand that like way further, and that's like yeah. <laughs> there's all over the country. Okay. And you're a awesome. Thank you so much, Miriam. You're next. Hello, uh, Miriam Ortiz Pino, more than organized here. Um, I love all the suggestions that Sonia had about the keywords, um, but also in terms of referral partners, um, the senior centers, great idea. There's also the photo organizers. Um, photo, sorry, the photo managers. It's an association of professional organizers that specialize in photography or family photos and stuff. And there's some places like Legacy Box um, and other places that kind of do Ken Burns style from your photos. You might just want to look at that and, and genealogy um, groups in terms of referral opportunities for you. Okay. I think it's a fabulous idea. Awesome so much. Thank you for the suggestions. Hi, Jason. Um, Jason. Like, great presentation. Uh, high energy. I liked it a lot. Thank you. Um, my suggestions are for sources of referrals of uh, someone mentioned senior centers. So I think the uh, cultural centers to introduce yourself to whoever is relevant there to be on their radar as a referral source of a cultural center, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, like that. Maybe even GCMs. And I think there's definitely overlap in a way you could get into the wedding business because with receptions you it's more and more common to have a little video ahead of time right so you maybe you have the parents speaking about their children mm -hmm. telling stories That's like that so to kind of replace and refine the you know kind of parent speech like that so yeah that video like that so and that's already an established market and people are already willing to spend money on the wedding so right i think they're already in that right. like some i like that yeah, yeah. yeah. Guys kind of changing the, the way yeah Toast is, you know. And not to put too much work on you guys, but I'm sure you guys can do two per month like that, like you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Uh can you tell me who's next? It's Phil one. Phil, thanks. Phil, you're next. Hi guys. Hi Phil. Um, from sunny New York. <laughs> um <laughs> it, it very, very cool uh presentation. Uh I recently I want to say recently, a couple of years ago, decided to look into my family history 
And uh, I found I had four brothers and a sister I didn't know about. Wow. So my, dad, my dad was kind of... Um, <laughs> he was an explorer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, you, you opened up by saying that you didn't know if this was going to be a hit. And then you said, wow, we got all this interest. There's all these people. They want all these things done. And I've had a look online and I see you've got a number of videos on that. And so um, it kind of didn't really click to me until uh, Sue asked the question about what are you charging? And you're going, well, we don't really know. We've got to sort this out and we've got to sort that out. You have to know your basic cost. All right. Mm -hmm. So you, what, what is your studio? What is the basic cost? What is your, your, your time worth, all right? And, and set yourself, what is the minimum that you need to, to charge to cover those costs, all right? Sure. And, and I know you do things like, um, I, I, did, I don't know how long this would take. I, imagine, I would imagine each video presentation that you're gonna be doing varies in times of the interviews and how you put the, the, the films together but you should be get you should be able to get a mean average and and so um you know a couple of uh um things you got from miriam and from sue on other other partnerships were good um you mentioned about you know as a side note you'll do videos to digital well great that's a good market and why not contact the people that are doing videos um to video and say we offer this, all right, and see, and that 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 could be a good connection, and and I think genealogists that certainly would be a good connection because the genealogist that I hired, um, which actually was in England because you can hear I'm from England, um, uh, the money I paid was was totally worth it because now I've got four brothers and a sister I interact with I never knew I had, but you the pricing that you do should be based on what they call value-based pricing. What is the value, what is the worth to the people that you are making the video for? Not what is it worth to you to cover your costs and a little bit more, what's the worth to them? And if you've got that amount of interest coming into you quickly, then you know you have something of value. So now you pitch yourself, like you said, you can't go too short, too low because people will think, what do I get from this? And you can't go too high. But think about the medium to the high side, because this is a, this this particular venture you're moving into is of extreme value, not just to the families, but to legacies in general and culture, and 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 learning and and passing on language and ideas that that not a lot of other people are doing. So think about, and you can research value by price. And if you want more help on it, I'll, I'll give you a chat about it afterwards. Um, we can contact separately, um, but that would be the way that you would do it, all right? And, and then you will be earning enough to cover your costs. You'll be earning a nice uh, profit and you still will be giving a huge amount of value to the customers. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Phil. Thank you. Appreciate you. We're getting short on time because we do have another community um, presentation. Paul, do you want to answer sure. the question? Um, this isn't a question. I'm Paul Sauter from uh, Equiseek. We develop and sell genetic tests for horses. So it's a half-baked suggestion. Okay. So one of the problems I hear is that you're selling these one at a time. And what you really want is someone who says, I need 12 or I need 20 of these. And, you know, one suggestion that we've had is like do the wedding market because they're all the same. All the wedding mm -hmm. people talk to each other. You'd be in that group. Another is think about is there a nonprofit somewhere that's trying to document what's vanishing in New Mexico, like the languages, right? And if if a nonprofit says, okay, we want to do something about this and we have money, and you're producing videos for them, that could potentially be a lot of videos. And and those would be of extreme interest to people who are not related. So I think what you want to look at is someone who has the money to do multiple videos on some of the things unique to New, Mex New Mexico, and then that's gonna make your company completely unique. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Barbara, you're the last question. Okay. I'll make this quick. My name is Barbara Dawson with Purple Mulch. Loved your presentation. And I love the combination of the 
engineer <laughs> and ah, created that the left brain, the right brain. Thing. <laughs> I mean, you always need it. So my question goes more to as you expand, you guys make a great team, you know your strengths, you're working on your strengths. How, when you work with somebody else, you bring on another team, how are you teaching them the communication skills that you have? And your communication skills may be totally, I was born this way and it yeah. works, but how are you going to teach them the communication skills that you have? So and that's a really good question just because with this company, it is very personable to who we're working with. Yes. So again, it's bringing on people that we know are also personable as well, but still going into more of like a duplicating fashion. So even though it's not, it might not be as personable, they could still follow the system and still be able to get that same type of concrete emotional stories that we're looking for. So just kind of break it down. Because so, I know nobody's gonna be able to go in and be just like me nobody's gonna be able to go in and be just like oscar yes. but finding that nice balance between what they can do and what they can't do um, but we're still trying to figure out that balance <laughs> it's an important one yes. Yes. So thank you <laughs> all right so so this is actually the last question and hopefully you're prepared yeah okay so okay. The, the classic well actually there's two questions Shit. and then there's two guys so this I've is been, gonna take forever i've been studying this all, all right. right so first of all it's <laughs> Red, green, or favorite fruit? That one was that. No, I'm <laughs> well, chili Kitten is my favorite. Fruit. Okay, fantastic. Oh, that's great. Great yeah. choice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, green, green chili. Awesome. Red chili. All right. Ah. Oh, I love it. Well, I see, it's that good teamwork. I love it. Um, and what is it that we, as, as we here at, in the house here or and online, what can we do to help you continue to grow your company you know, today, this week? Well, we love the suggestions you guys gave to <clears throat> keywords and helping us find different markets to venture into. That was amazing. Um, just, I mean, right now we're we're, we're really niche. We're we're small, uh, but we have potential to reach out there. We need to, you know, gain the trust. Uh, hopefully, we gain your trust, and we want to gain the trust of others as well. So, just uh, let people know we exist. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. And the uh, last thing is, if you guys can come up to us, um, we do have that survey too. Oh. Yeah. oh. Awesome. Because we, we do have a, a rough idea of like our pricing, but we don't want that to yeah deter. pretty much deter what we have on the survey. So Could we share that in a one way test email, Eric? So we got to everyone. Yeah, that's that okay. That's we okay? can do that. And yeah. maybe we have you camp out someplace where, where folks can we will do it here too. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. All right, well, thank you guys. Appreciate well, you. Yeah, big hand. Uh, thank you. Anyway. Real good. I, I've got a couple of announcements. We've got Let's see, do we have someone in the audience? So this, this next piece, uh, I'll share that we're, we've got a sort of a community partner. It's gonna be sharing a little bit about an event. So we'll, we'll, I'm gonna run through a few other events. We don't necessarily have an actual presentation. I'll do, do we have Rebecca? Okay, she's joining us on screen shortly. That's fantastic. So the things that I will highlight in the meantime are Mason and Matt, there's a lot of different events and activities. Some of those, if you're on the One Million Cups mailing list, you've got a handful, you got a little sprinkle like the next two or so weeks. Uh, hopefully we get uh, get more of those out there. The things that I wanted to share are Mesa of Mountains, which is taking place. That's uh, several different lo locations for several different organizations that are helping with SBIR and STTR. And Arrowhead Center has organized that. Really good sessions today with some great um, folks from EBA and SBA and the other programs that help run these programs. Uh, John Chavez, who I'll mention in the background, uh, he's, he's involved in that, which, which means it's actually good. Uh, so I'll share that. Another thing that's going on today, I think through, uh, through Thursday, maybe through Friday, is the Cyber and Space Symposium with Senior Ingenuity with the Workforce Development Center. I see the tickets are sold out, but you might be able to sneak in if, if you head up there. That that's, uh, promises Deloitte as a partner in that. They had some really good content about how we're going to continue to grow the space industry, but also how that connects with uh, cybersecurity um, as well. A few other things this weekend, Saturday, special event that we'll be hearing about in just a few seconds. Uh, and that's in the International District. The other one I wanted to share is if you care, if you have maybe a little bit of tech skills, not necessarily a ton, um, but you care about broadband equity. Uh, Code for America is doing sort of a day of action. They've got their Brigade Congress happening. It's in Kansas City. Um, and what they do with these is, Take like half a day and work on different projects that help the country. 
Um, we've got a small local chapter for code for Albuquerque that, that's mostly dormant, uh, but we have a handful of people that are involved. And what we're going to be trying to do is looking at the broadband access here in New Mexico, but also how affordable is that? Is it really accessible? Is it really attainable for the folks that need to have access for their, you know, their kids, their school, their family, accessing basic services? So that's taking place. Uh, I think that was in the email that went out this morning. A couple of things next week. Uh, 20th of October, Native American Leadership, that's over at NM Reef. Actually, it's online, but it's uh, done by, Native Amer uh, by New Mexico Rainforest across the street. And also on the 20th, there is a sales. We talked a little bit with Barbara last week about a sales presentation that she's going to be making here. It's a lunch and learn, you know, round bag lunch, just real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you walk in and go to a networking event and you walk away with a win-win using my business? Maybe there's some reason why that's happening. So what I'm going to do is walk you through some conferences so that you go, oh, maybe I should change the way I show up. Not <laughs> significantly, <laughs> but a little bit. So please join us next week. Awesome. Next week, and yes, I will bring you to the It's October 20th. <laughs> Thursday. Thursday from 11.30 in the morning. So when I bring a bag lunch, I'll bring here. cookies. Yep, here. It's only in person. Yes, only in person. A uh, couple more things that I'll mention, 26th of October, New Mexico Business and Economic Summit. That's focusing on policy related to entrepreneurship and right to start. Uh, that is taking place, over, I think, over at the University of New Mexico. Two other things that I'll mention that are happening on November 10th and November 11th. On the 10th, there's a hire a coach session that's happening here at, uh, is it happening here? Is it yes. by the Sun Center? That looks great. Um, so you're doing somewhere on screen, perhaps. A couple Miriam. of other folks, Miriam. Yeah, it seems like some folks who've been part of the uh, One Million Cups Extended Family uh, are going to be doing that presentation. And also, uh, John mentioned to me that there is the CTSC BioVenture Partner Event at UNM with Health uh, Sciences Center, and that's taking place on the 11th, basically launch, launching, um, let's say, a new program, a new initiative around uh, healthcare, but also how do, how do entrepreneurs get involved? How do, how do we make more technology in that space happen? Let's see, I'm not sure if I'm handing off to Rebecca, but can we hear a little bit about this event that's happening in the International District on uh, this Saturday? You know, we have, Mark is also up there. Rebecca, excellent. I will step out of the way. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, so uh, Mark is also on the call. He's with uh, the City of Albuquerque's Economic Development office um, focusing on workforce solutions. So I'll pass it to him next, but I just wanted to invite all of you to the International District Harvest Market Ribbon Cutting and Small Business Resource Fair. Um, that big empty lot uh, at Catherine and San Mateo is being developed into a couple different things. Uh, the middle portion is becoming this harvest market where there will be um, incubator space. And so there's a ribbon cutting for that. And um, further down the line, we have um, <clears throat> the new Albuquerque Community Safety Department will be building their building there. Um, on Saturday from 10 to 2, uh, we are going to have a whole bunch of business resources there, um, including you know business, business registration. Um, let me double check. Uh, air quality um, and uh, code enforcement. So that's um, if you need permits or are building a brick and mortar shop and have questions there. Um, transit is going to be there working on their ABQ ride forward um, study. And um, so talking to people about how they use transit and what would make them maybe use it more. Um, Procurement is going to be there. So if any of you are interested in becoming a vendor with the city, um, that'll be a good opportunity to talk to them. Um, Albuquerque Parks and Recreation will also be doing a tree giveaway. We are looking at more ways to help people plant trees at their commercial properties. But on Saturday, you will be able to just show up maybe with a truck, maybe invite your neighbor that has a truck and you can both get a tree because these are... Uh, they're called one inch trees, but that means they're trunks. So they're like five foot trees. Um, and so that's kind of for the whole community. You can get one for your, your house or for your business, whichever um, 
you like and um oh and there'll be free food so who doesn't like a free lunch um mark do you want to talk a little bit more about the workforce connections resources that are going to be there yes thank you rebecca and i will share carrie vendor who's actually one in person today she's our small business liaison um there so i'll let carrie jump in after me um, she got the memo to be in person. <laughs> Sorry about that all. So I'm Mark Zintek. Um, I'm the Workforce Development Liaison uh, for the City of Albuquerque's Economic Development Department. And Carrie and I will be there on Saturday as well to uh, show what economic development resources we have for small businesses within the city. Um, so quick plug for my, our main resource is Job Training Albuquerque. So this is a free workforce program for Albuquerque-based small businesses, 500 employees or fewer based in Albuquerque. Those are the two main criteria. And the City of Albuquerque's Economic Development Department will pay for your training at institutions such as CNM Ingenuity, UNM Anderson School, um, Associate General Contractors of New Mexico. We have a ton of small business trainings and you know QuickBooks, HR, uh, project management. I'm just going to drop it in the chat right here. Um, it's a great resource. It's not too good to be true. So if you're a small business looking to get some more training for either you or your staff, you know, please talk to me or visit job training abq.org and I'll pass it to Carrie. And if you come Saturday, you can talk to me in person. Yeah. Hi, I didn't get the Zoom demo. No. <laughs> um, I'm Carrie Bender. I'm the small business liaison for the of Albuquerque. I am the small business office. I am an office of one right now under economic development. Uh, it's my job and only my job to serve small and micro businesses in the city, um, finding uh -huh. resources. Um, I do one on one um, coaching, sort of. I uh, started and sold a couple of businesses here in town. Um, and I've just been on since since March, but I, uh, it's my job to find resources for small businesses. So, and um, I will be there at the Small Business Resource Fair on Saturday. Excellent. A couple quick questions. I got one. Okay. Um, is there a link somewhere to the event on Saturday that we can share this out to everybody? I can grab that real quick. I was going to upload the um, flyers um, too, but I don't think I can attach files in the chat. Probably. And yeah, it would be easier for us to just have a link to something anyway. That'll work. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. We appreciate you guys showing up today. Well, and, and also, I think since we do have a variety of different folks to talk with, um, maybe we can leave the camera on. I don't know. I'm not sure how exactly we can do that. But I do want to have an opportunity for folks to, to talk with our different presenters while they're here. So I'll just do a real quick. Um, how many folks in the room? How many folks are here in the room? Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's an easy question. I, by the way, I love. They they talked to me about this uh, this telephone game or Chinese whispers, as as, uh, as Phil said. Um, I think that really worked out. I think that was that was a nice way of doing that. Um, so, how many folks are here for the first time? All right, we got we got a handful. Four, got, okay, five. okay. Oh, do we have time? Have them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get them up. Oh boy. Okay. Oh well. I've well, screwed all up. So while while folks come up, if you don't mind sharing, like you know what your name is, what what it is you're doing, like the three sentence version, but also um, how many people consider themselves entrepreneurs here in the room? All right. All right. Just wanted to make sure we we got our stuff taken care of. Uh, yeah. Let's let's hear from some new folks if you don't mind coming up and saying hi. We the try fact, to make it a relatively calm wait, space, safe space. We ask those questions provide those metrics back to Kaufman, but they're trying to weed out that email that I reply to every morning, and they're really hoping that people will start checking in. So it's really important that you check in, um, either via the QR code or just going to the website and the Albuquerque community and saying that you're here. Come on up. Who's going to introduce themselves first? Oh, come on. Uh, hi, so my friend Jason invited me today. Um, I am at the very beginning stages with a good friend of mine in starting a mediation and conflict management training firm here in Albuquerque. And um, 
So yeah, we are at the very beginning stages. We really don't know what we're doing fully. And so just getting ideas. This sounds like a wonderful group. I'm so grateful um, to be here and to um, see this. I've been texting her the whole time. She's a professor at UNM. And so um, she's not able to be here, but just grateful to know you all and get to know you better and um, get all the resources here. It's just, it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Hello, everyone. My name is Eleni. I am a registered nurse and I love to serve the community. This is the first time I come here. I'm looking to network and meet people <laughs> because I'm starting my new business as a senior transition specialist. I want to help the senior population in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area to help them find resources when they face the challenge that they're in the hospital and then they have to go to a rehab center or the doctor says you're not safe to go back home. So I would like to offer that service to the community, help them transition to that process. That way they don't feel that anxiety and that fear that comes with it and that they don't lose their independence, help them overcome this bump in the road and um, is very, to me, senior population is my niche. As a nurse, I work in different areas and working with the senior population, that's what I love. And I've been doing it for 14 years. So I, I knew and every day I know this is what I wanna do. So I'm looking for ideas on how to help this business grow and help so many people because that's my calling. So it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for allowing me to present myself. And my husband is right here, supporting me, sharing me. <laughs> you can do this. So he said um, that he's very grateful to be here as well. He's a pastor and uh, we love to serve. Thank you for having us. Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Vanessa Palacios. Um, I will admit I lied a little bit. I have actually been to um, a million cups, but in a very different capacity, um, working for actually PNM. Um, I'm no longer with PNM and just starting out my own business venture. And our company name is Lemon Cannabis Company. Um, so we're just starting in the business. We're, I think, a little late to the game, but that's okay. Late is better than never. Um, we're going into this venture with um, a, a good family friend and my husband. Um, and I'm also taking uh, risk and compliance courses through UNM that will be starting here soon in November. So I'm excited about that because I'm also looking into getting into the consulting field. So in helping other cannabis businesses just to understand the realm of that compliance. So uh, very excited again, just the beginning of this journey. So I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Kat Mariani. I had no idea there would be introductions as part of this, but luckily I had some coffee. Um, so I am an equine guided coach. My coaching company is called Mountain Heart Coaching. Um, I'm a transplant here from upstate New York. I got out here about a year and a half ago. And um, so I bring people together with horses to deepen their lives, basically to have reflected to them um, limiting patterns, limiting beliefs, or clarify where they want to go in their lives. Um, horses are incredible teachers, incredible partners in this work. Um, I mean, I've definitely seen, seen unbelievable things unfold and I've had them happen in my life as a result of working with horses. Um, so I bring together kind of the science of why horses are these incredible um, reflective partners, but also I work from the spiritual and kind of the mythopoetic uh, side as well, because horses and human civilization have been intertwined since the beginning. So if you want to know more, please just chat. And I can all of you. Awesome. I guess that's a wrap, right, Eric? Do we have anything else? That's a wrap. Thanks for coming. Going for this. Oh, thanks, Paul. Hey, sure, I, I'm glad to close it out, but you can't talk what we've seen here today. Lots of new people, lots of interesting things going on, and a fantastic set of suggestions for our presenters. 
So give yourselves a big hand. All right, see you all next week and do what you can to lift up entrepreneurship in New Mexico. <laughs>